Hello, my name's Adrian Goldberg and welcome to my latest minute review, West Bromwich Albion 2, Aston Villa 2. My voice a little bit hoarse from the game, as you might understand. Now, was J-Rod's injury time equaliser handball? It was, twice over. Did Albion get away with it? They most certainly did. None of this will bother Baggies fans too much, certainly not against Villa. But once the joy, once the glow of an undeserved late point starts to wear off, what are we left with? Well, a realisation perhaps that the team from Witten were the better side by some way over 90 minutes. They moved the ball with greater purpose, they were more organised, and if Tammy Abraham's prowess in front of goal matched his huge reputation, they would have won the game quite comfortably. He missed a sitter in each half. John McGinn, too, rattled a post for the visitors. Albion were bright at the start of both halves, Harvey Barnes, a real menace down the left, and utterly bamboozling and embarrassing Alan Hutton with his skill and pace to set up Dwight Gale's first half equaliser after El Ghazi's shot had been deflected in to give Villa the advantage of Hegazi. Again, Almi were bright after the interval. Again, El Ghazi fired home, this time from 25 yards, and for the last half hour, it was difficult to see a way back in for the baggies. Barry and Livermore, reunited as a central midfield partnership, looked predictably snail-paced and devoid of imagination in that last half hour as Villa up the pace. Sacco and Houlihan, both potential game-changers, again left on the bench, must wonder what they must do to get a game. So sure, there was joy in Albion getting a late equaliser and denying Villa two points, but two points is all Albion have yielded from two home games in five days. That is not promotion form.